What's up folks, Casual Dad here, and we have a very exciting couple days. Um, some quick housekeeping real quick, we also got balance patch notes dropped today, and I will be doing a recording of that today, but I'm going to go ahead and schedule that to come out on Monday morning to coincide with the launch of the new Custodes season. So that's coming. Uh, but today we're going to go ahead and do our Warhammer Combat Cards Warlord Deck Building Guide for the brand new Supreme Commander, the true prophet of the Wah himself, Gazgul, Gaz, Gazgul, Gazgul, Gaz. Gaz. Uh, he's pretty amazing, and I am super, super pumped about this one. Uh, some really cool updates that we're doing these, too. So I actually have decks direct from Harry the Mad Emperor. Uh, so the design team has sent me some actual decks the way they would play this guy to kind of give you a sense of his strengths and weaknesses. Uh, and then I have a deck I built myself. And then right now we actually have a 400 deck point max level campaign, which coincides with the launch of Gaz, which is awesome. So we'll actually get to see him in play in his kind of standard ladder version, and then also his, like, max level full glory, which is going to be great. Um, but let's talk about him real quick, right? So coming in at 92 points, he's right in the middle of the current stack of Supreme Commanders. I believe that puts him at third out of six. Check me on that. Um, and that's also as of right now, and who knows, more are coming. So he'll probably set on the more expensive side, maybe. Um, but yeah, coming in with some really impressive stats. He's got base 80 ranged, 160 melee, which is no joke. Um, and then he comes with the exact same stats he had before, primary trait of Furious Charge, secondary trait of Fear, which is a really awesome combo, meaning that he hits the board and is very impactful immediately, and then also can stick around for a while because he's got a giant chunk of hit points, and then also has Fear. Um, very impressive base stats. However, his ability is different. So I will say that his attack stats, particularly melee, are actually going to be a little bit lackluster compared to what you get from the standard Gaz. So if you're used to Gaz landing with like 300 attack and doing a Furious Charge and hit, this one doesn't do that. However, he does have an actual global ability that applies all game, which makes him, I think, just a much more interesting Warlord. So let's look at that real quick. It's a two-part ability, just like all of the Supreme Commanders. So we've got the main one is tricky. So when you play a friendly card, deal damage to the enemy card with highest current wounds equal to 10% of the current wounds total of all friendly cards in play. So just to talk through that, so if you have 400 hit points on the board, uh, and then you play a 100 hit point card that brings your total to 500, and then you will deal 50 damage to the highest hit point card your opponent has on the board, which has a lot of big advantages here. Number one, you know where the damage is going. Number two, you can trigger this any number of times. Number three, orcs have a lot of hit points, so that's really, really powerful. And uh, number four, we'll get back to that. So he's, he's a lot like Artemis with a couple key differences. The number one being that it's not based on the hit point total of the target, which is good and bad. So for Artemis, if you're playing against really, really beefy cards, he will do more damage than Gaz, most likely. Um, but it will be random. So you may hit the 10 hit point endless thing in the corner instead of hitting your actual target. So Gaz is more targeted, does a little bit less damage, but is more consistent and you have a lot more control over how it works and you can build around it because you can build a deck that triggers this in effective and consistent ways. Um, and then additionally, when a friendly, then his second ability is, additionally, when a friendly card is below 25% of its starting wounds, its attack stats are increased by 25%. So they get Bloodlust, which is phenomenal. Um, really powerful ability, plays dramatically into what orcs do and I love it. So that is Gazgul Thraka. This is him in all of his glory. I believe it's the same model, just with a, a nice glow up here in the visual. So in the lovely border. I love that card border on this guy. Uh, check the keywords real quick. Monster, HQ, Goffs, Melee Specialist, Character, Supreme Commander. We may see abilities at some point once there are more Supreme Commanders that target Supreme Commanders specifically. Don't know what that would be. That's completely off the cuff. I actually have no idea if anything like that is coming. Uh, but let's look at the deck. So this is the deck that I was actually sent by Harry slash the Mad Emperor. A couple things to keep in mind here is that Gaz himself is 92 points which takes up a giant chunk of your deck points in the normal ladder, your 200 deck points. So you have to strike a balance, like the launch note said, if you want to get more triggers or if you want to do more damage from your triggers. And you can go kind of both ways. So my immediate thought when this Warlord was designed is your Medicaid cards tend to have particularly high health versus their um, attack stats and cost. So they are more efficient cards to play that not only bump your total hit points on the board, but then also do apply, um, do have a really efficient way to trigger Gaz's ability for extra damage and help keep your big heavy hitters on the board, which you really need if you have thinner decks. Another key point to highlight is that Endless 
counts as two triggers. So when you first play the card, it triggers Gaz's attack, and then when the first copy is killed and the second one deploys, that triggers the attack again. So this guy is going to be hilariously powerful against uh, Bad Ruck, which I really like. Should be good against Call as well, because Call tends to hide really beefy stuff behind other things. Um, that is where you're going to regret not having Artemis's ability instead, because the hit will not do as significant of damage a lot of the time as Artemis's would, but it will hit the cards you want it to, and you can control the triggers again, which is cool. So we've got a combination of extremely high hit points here, nice combination of hit points and durability, and then dirt cheap cards. Makari, my first thing that I said, I, I mentioned to the designer at Harry after this, I was like, so this was totally designed around Makari, right? Because there are two versions of Makari, both of them have really low cost relative to very high hit points. This guy's a seven point card, gives you inspiring presence on the board, and then also has a chunk of hit points for seven points. Um, and then also we got Kaboom. One thing I want to mention about this is just like Artemis and to a somewhat lesser extent the Flyrant and um, Aramon, is this is a pressure deck, right? So it's doing constant damage all game long, just damage, 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 damage. So things like Psionic Blast, things like Death Blow, things like Furious Charge will add additional chip damage to just this pressure that the deck is building up over the course of a game, which makes it feel like a very engaging and active playstyle and makes it quite intimidating to face. Kerboom is a natural pick. Very low hit points, but very low cost, and has the combination of a good melee stat, and then also has um, Furious Charge and, well, if you have mine enough, <laughs> and Death Blow to apply that extra damage. Clear shields, clear some injured cards, good stuff. Smirk it, another cheap drop, and has that taunt. Um, these two both, their hit points are so low, they're not going to contribute much to the damage, but, I mean, add five damage to it and give you an additional trigger. It's not awful. And you've got the two endless cards again in here that are going to make things interesting, but this guy and Gaz himself who you can play early if you want to cheese this ability, who both do a lot of damage to this. So I'm actually going to play this, and then we're going to do two other deck builds, and we'll go from there. Checking on time. Boom. And we should see nice, fast games. All right. So you have an incentive to play your heavy hit points early. You also have an incentive to choose slower cards that have low hit points, because or your, uh, your bigger cards with high hit points early, because that means that every drop after has additional extra damage. So this one still had the highest hit points, so we took the trigger. Um, so there is definitely incentive to play aggressive and attack first, but I personally would really be inclined to take... Oh, man, brutal. I personally would be... So we're going to go ahead and do the Medicaid, which is going to hit this guy over here. And you can't see where I'm pointing. Sorry, it's going to hit the... Uh, that one. <laughs> and then my next trigger is going to hit the... Big Game Hunter in the middle. And I'm really glad I moved this guy because that Big Game Hunter hit. Boom, boom, boom. And I've got a bunch of hit points on the table right now, so my triggers are going to hit really hard. Got the Berserk on that guy really contributing as well. Um, I'm taking some... F ah, Makari has doubled attack stats. Look at that. Ooh, got the Big Game Hunter over here. That's not what you want. Huh. But, look at this. So this is the combination of Gaz's ability just really ramping up the Stompa Chompa, which I really love. Um, I played the Dawn of War games back in the day, and I remember the Squigoth as being this really massive thing that is super aggressive and just goes crazy when it starts taking damage. So this is, like, love it. Love it. Uh, we're going to drop Smirk it to try to keep our Stompa Chompa alive a little bit longer, which is good. That did keep him alive. I don't think he's going to survive the game, but that's okay. Ooh, that's a bummer. This is phenomenal, because Shadow Sun is going to take the damage from every single drop. Bam. Well, actually, now it's not. It's going to switch around a bit. And that is a bummer, too, where Artemis may be a little bit more powerful in situations like this, because um, Artemis can hit the same target, even if it's already been injured, whereas Gaz can't. But I've got an easy closeout on this one. Bam. Uh, pretty decent matchup. That was a good unranked match where we saw just a straight-up Shadow Sun deck, and a pretty scary range deck, too. So you got to see a pretty decent matchup there. So that was the Mad Emperor's deck. I'm going to go ahead and play my ladder deck as well. And then we're going to take a look at Supreme Gaz. We will see him in, the, in his full glory in the campaign. Bit of a server load there. Chunka, 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 chunka. What's going on? All right, here we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And this is the deck that I built. It's a little bit thinner, but I have a little bit more hit points here. These guys are just extremely efficient. They have high hit points, low cost, great melee stats, and they have enough hit points to benefit from the damage boost. Of course, Makari Makari. Uh, this guy has 
awesome hit points for 18 points and has the addition of taunt. The ranged ready is not nothing. It's not really going to help you. But this guy also, when he takes half damage, he shoots back really hard, um, which has been a lot of fun. So these two on there, breaking the rule a little bit, having two Makaris in play. But yeah, you know, as long as I don't have them both on the board at the same time, it's fine. Uh, one thing that I will say against this deck is I don't have any endless triggers. So I kind of want to change this right away and actually put both endless cards in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just because when I was first building this, I didn't even consider that endless would do multiple triggers. So who has higher hit points? He's got 140, 148. There we go. And that should give you enough points to pop the other one in here. Yeah, perfect. Look at that. Um, I should mention that the Mad Emperor's deck actually didn't have the nine point wrangle get. This guy. Wrangle get. It actually had um, the endless red gobbo, the 10 point taunt that does that also has endless, which is a, a better pick. But since I don't have that, I'll use my other endless. This now is a very frightening deck, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, and I'm not currently laddering orcs this season, but I sure am next season. <laughs> let's, let's go. Um, but yeah, I'm not running them this season, so this should be a very easy matchup. So you should need to see me just completely run over someone. But we will see. I believe I did mention that because I'm doing these, I did have my personal difficulty rating increased. So I should get matchups that are more challenging, even in something like this. Oh, yeah, give me all the triggers. Oh, here. Extra hit points. Splat. Oh, man, you moved the target acquired. Although, I guess I had taunt on the table already, so it didn't really matter. Uh, hmm. Yeah, we'll do this. Because when he shoots Makari, he's probably going to get him down to half fairly quickly, and then we will very quickly get to the... Ooh, bummer. Get to those half points to where he is. Going to do a lot of damage. So this is going to land on the um, brown thing on the left. What is that? Razor Shark. I don't know the Tau vehicles very well, so that's always a bit of a question mark. Okay, so this is a lower level deck, but not nothing. These are some really scary pieces. And you saw right there, I covered it up, but the one copy of the Endless card died, which triggered the second one to pop out. And then Makari. That Makari counterattack is devastating. And then this is just going to go straight to... Who's the Warlord here? Shadow Sun again? Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and do this. Give me the two triggers. Yeah, and she's going to heal up the Riptide, which is a bit of a bummer. Let's go ahead and nuke him. Oh, I could, got him. That's lethal. Yeah. So that wasn't the best matchup because it was lower level, but that, I hope, did show how the deck works and how the mechanics play because now we are jumping straight to the Supreme Commander version. And for this, I'm going to go ahead and real quick, I will play my game. I will play my deck, the one that I built, um, and then I will also jump to the one that the Mad Emperor would throw in here as well, just so we can see it both. And again, it does use the 10-point... So this is what I built, just to go ahead and throw that in there. These two have just insane hit points, and the rest are just high efficiency pieces. This guy's in here because he's got Taunt and death blow. that pressure again, really high hit points for the cost, and just uh, great melee too. So if he goes down to half, he punches like a truck. This is one of the first ones I thought about because he's got a really good hit points for that band, plus again has Medicae, and has the ranged ready, or the ranged debuff ready, which is really good defensive tech. Similarly, this guy, all of your cheap Medicaes, um, they are, again, very cheap. Their attack stats are not great, but they have a bunch of hit points for the cost, and they top off your bigger cards and give you a bunch of hit, extra hit points to trigger. So we're going to go ahead and deploy this, and then I will pull up Mad Emperor's deck so I will have it ready so that I can run again with that as well. Da, 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 da. This is somewhat earlier in the campaign. It's an apocalypse campaign, so it still is fairly challenging. Boom. And you see that just massive hit points right out of the gate. So we're going to do... Ooh. Ooh. All right. A little Haxor in here. Okay. And there's the 400 point one. We'll look at that. Da, 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 da. I should have shot him. I should have shot him. Why did I do that? Death blow. Oh, and God, what a death blow. Ooh, target acquired. Yeah, okay. I'm going to... Highest hit points. And that just does so much damage. This is still fairly early in the max level campaign, so we are seeing max level cards, but they're not terribly threatening relative to what we're going to see later. So this is going to be a relatively easy match. Um, another note, I believe I mentioned it, but just in case I did not, the... 
damage that Gaskell, the auto damage that Gaskell deals is does go through shields. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. And here is what Mad Emperor sent me as the deck that he would build for this. It's a low bonus deck, so if you want the free card, don't use this. And I'm going to play one game with this just so you can see it. So we do have... We don't have Makari for shame. Either copy. No Makaris. Okay. Uh, I'm going to keep this one in here because this, again, does use the 10-point Endless Red Gabo, which I do not have. And we'll grab the others. So this kind of splits the difference a bit. There's also a 28-pointer in here I don't have, so we'll see what I can build around that. So we got this thing, which mine is extremely low level, so it's cool to see that we get this thing. And this one, oh man, this is a gnarly, gnarly deck. So we got the three really big heavy hitters. They all have good hit points and a ton of damage. We've got Berserk in there. We got Furious Charge and Melee ready to really double down on the melee damage. And they also all have um, a really nice combo of devastating attacks themselves plus high hit points. So that's a, a really effective combo, which of course would absolutely be known because these are the cards picked by the guy who designed the card. <laughs> And there we go. So this is a really evened out deck where everything is kind of a, in the 50 to 60 point range. And then it rounds out with an endless. So he's got this guy in there. And then I've got 31 points. So there's a 28 pointer in here that I don't have. So I'll go and look at the 31 point band. It's the 28 point epic. I can't even tell what that is. I think it's a snake bite, some kind of savage guy. Let's see, 31. Ooh, this guy. Who's got the most hit points here? He's got 215. 225. And a shield. It's going to be brutal. Okay. And then we'll call it after this. This will be kind of our deck building guide. Hopefully this has been helpful understanding Gaz. I am so pumped for this one. Uh, he's really fun. And he's melee centric. So you can run him with range. Like the, the deck that I built had a bunch of range stuff. But he's really focused on melee. Which is an opportunity for melee again to shine. Where it does fall behind ranged most often. I really love to see melee get a leg up because there are very few warlords that are actually effective in... That is so many hit points. <laughs> there are very few melee decks that are really effective in the latter relative to the other attack types. So I really love to see those kind of shine a little bit more. This is going to be a devastating and fast matchup. Just because I should have played a little bit into the campaign before doing this. Oh my god, look at that. Wow, he killed Stompa Champa. Okay, right after I said this is going to be easy. Uh, but yeah, it still is going to be a fairly straightforward, fairly quick match. So we'll drop the shield guy in here so he will not take the damage. Man, max level, this guy is a monster. Alright, alright. And I believe Furious Charge will trigger before the heal. No, it didn't. Okay, well that's a bummer. Woo, god, just chainsawing through my stuff over here. But you know what? It's not enough. Again, we do have the balance patch notes coming out, and there are changes to a number of the cards that we've actually seen today. <laughs> That's a really good one. I am super pumped about it. Uh, between Gaz and those patch notes, it's completely defined what I'm going to play next season, which I'm, again, pretty excited about. So, And this is it. We'll keep this short. This is my Gazgul Thraka Supreme Commander Prophet of the Wah deck building guide. Hopefully this was fun. Hopefully this was helpful. We'll talk again soon.